Yo, thanks for tuning in to this Boiler Room episode I don't even know. Uh, I think we're sitting on five right now. Um, got a show for you today. This is K-Dub's Metamorpho Tournament, which I'll explain in a bit. But uh, he has gone with a double elimination bracket. Um, after the initial uh, rounds of Swiss. And so this is the winner's bracket. So the winner of this game is automatically in. And then they will play the winner of the loser's bracket. And uh, so we're looking at Darth Bane and Remy right here. Let me test out my little stream and see if I got the list correct. Oh, it's not showing up. Well, still a work in progress, but maybe I can read them out to y'all. So, Darth Bane is running uh, triple jumps, which we've been seeing a lot of lately. Well, maybe I can get it right here. Well, there we go. Um, so this is our Spain's list we're looking at, and a uh, pretty standard for this triple jump list. Um, the only difference is uh, two of them have a feedback array instead of extra munitions. Other than that, pretty much the standard Jump Master 1500 we've been seeing. Two with Plasma Torps, one with Proton, got the Agromex and the Dead Eye Guidance Chip, pretty standard. Really a meta meta defining list. I don't wouldn't say it's been dominant, but it's definitely had its hand in shaping the wave eight meta. Um, and Remy's very interesting list. Come on. Uh, so Remy's got Paylob, who's probably the most seen Scumhawk, um, with a Tiny Mindlick, Gonk, Twin Laser Turret, Guri with Tiny Mindlick, Virago, Sensor Jammer, and Auto Thrusters, and then Talon Bane with a Tawny and Engine. So, yeah, you don't see a whole lot of these three ships out of the Scum Arsenal. They've all got really good abilities, but just a little bit undercosted I think is the uh, or overcosted for what they bring I think is the consensus aren't quite efficient enough but uh, Remy's in the finals with them so again my consensus is always if you run a you know I would say playing comes probably is about 85% of what is going to be your tournament success. The other 15 is meta strategy. Oh, I'm getting messaged here. Whoops. That's weird. That is weird. Synchronize. I don't know why that jump master is showing up late. Okay, there it goes. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I would say your success in a tournament is 85% of it is going to be dependent on how well you play. The other 15 is just going to be uh, what the list you brought and how it stacks up against what the others you face, uh, luck, and just your overall matchups in general against the type of opponents you play. The other 85 just gonna be how we play, so it's awesome seeing a list like this do so well. And I think uh, one thing that 
definitely does well against the Jump Masters. His list that can go really, really fast and close that distance. Um, Talon, Bane, and Guri definitely have that ability. Palob, not quite so much. And I think I said this as much on the last cast, but I would love if the Hawk could equip an engine upgrade for cheap. I think that would go a very long way in helping it out. But it's going to have a hard time avoiding these Proton shots. So it's going to be interesting to see what we see here. Hmm. I'm seeing my stat thing is not working at all. Let me uh, give me a moment here to fix this.
Okay, sorry, I'm getting away from this game. Well... It's an interesting spot. Doesn't look super good for Remy here. He barrels in there. He's got auto thrusters active, but I think he's going to eat a torp from triple one here. Okay, well, I guess Talonbane in there gets a shot, so that's not terrible, because now he's... But I think Gurry's actually giving a range to both those guys, so this is going to be rough for him. Ugh. He only does one damage though. That is rough. I've got to do some dodging here, Guri. I gotta imagine Dark's gonna unload on him since he's got two shots on him. At least he's got the rock here. I mean, he could split damage, but... And it is a better shot at Talonbane. Yes, yeah, I would have shot with 222 first, because then you can see where you're at after that shot, and then decide if you want to go shoot at Guri again with... Triple one, or then shoot at Talonbane.
Mm, tough call. Calandros, yes, it certainly does. And I've always been a big fan of Sensor Jammer myself. I'm surprised it doesn't see a whole lot of more use than it does. Particularly on Vader. I, you know, when you see Vader, it's almost like advanced targeting computer is like a guarantee. But I love running Sensor Jammer on him. I guess people feel just like fire control system or maybe advanced sensors just gives you more bang for your buck, but... You consider how many times you get shot when a guy doesn't have a focus. And yeah, particularly against those U-boats, it really does help. I mean, that's pretty much the difference between Guri taking two more damage right there and being at one health on life support. And uh, yeah, for Remy, if you're getting caught out there at range three, which is the last thing you want to do against those U-boats, that really uh, went about as... Well, as he could have. He would have liked to have done a little more damage. But you only took two yourself in return. And now you really have an opportunity to close the distance. And these U-boats are going to have a hard time to line up any shots. Plus, they've already spent two of their torpedoes and only have two left. So if you can survive getting nuked here, maybe kill one before it gets his torp off. Which one's got the extra munitions? It looks like... It is the, uh, the one in the back, triple two. So, if you can kill him before he fires, that would be huge. It looks like they're ready to go.
Okay, well. Looks like triple eleven just hit a four forward. Right over that rock? He did. And it doesn't look like he rolled for it. Hmm. And then the other two just banked in. That was really that was really well done by Darth Bane. Kinda of surprised he could four forward him. And he could have just like two well, meh. But it looks like he didn't roll for the rock, forgot to. And Paylob is out of range to seal a focus. That hurts. But he's still going to get a shot. Man, and Triple Eleven just skirted in over that rock. Denies Talonbane a range one shot, which is nice. Calendro says he barrel rolled. Okay. Must have barrel rolled in behind it. I don't know why that doesn't show up in the log. Sorry for being away, guys. I had to go take care of something. So, Talonbane shooting at 22. And gets one. All right, so Ray punches through three. I gotta figure Darth is just gonna keep that, so he can make sure he gets off that last torpedo. Don't want to lose him with it's still in tow. That's just the worst. Yeah. I think. I think thirty. Triple three is probably gonna. Oh, he's still got a torpedo in tow, as well. Yeah, he's still got his plasma torp. Yeah, looks like he's gonna shoot at Talonbane. Wow. So no damage through the... That's crazy. Because the plasma torpedo... With that loadout, the Agromech Guidance Chip, I believe it's... You have a 79% chance of doing four hits. And then... Talonbane in that spot is only going to roll like 1.375 three, of aids on average with the focus. So, 
probably looking at doing doing two damage on average, just zero, so that hurts. We just still got two more shots. Wow. <clears throat> Our pal, what do you got? Paylob. And he gets a <laughs> fade eyeball. Wow. So, yeah. Bad luck for Darth. But you're still in it. This is a, this is that spot where if you're a great player, you're gonna keep your head in the game, keep playing as well as you can, because the dice can turn. I mean, if the 2013 World Championship is any indication, the dice can turn. There's no way it's game. I mean, you still got good position, and you can still block up a lot of these guys. Um, and still got one more shot too, so. This is where, I don't, you know, not necessarily bad players, but because um, you can, you know, you can be a talented player, but just not have the intangibles. You can just allow yourself to get rattled and go on tilt, basically. Um, and I think that's what separates some of the great players, like Paul, for example. And those are the best games to win. When you're down like that, and then you come back, there's nothing better than that. That's just the absolute best. And, yeah, man, 2014 Worlds, uh, or, sorry, 2013 Worlds, Paul's just getting crushed. He loses bigs in a rookie and only kills, like, I think, an academy in return. It's crazy. Uh, and then comes back to win it. And the dice definitely were hot early for Tex and completely flip flop down the stretch. But, you know, that can happen. So, so we no reason to just give up. Um, yeah. Average dice would see Talonbane dead or at one, and the feedback would finish him. Um, I'm trying to remember how the last turn went. But he only took one torpedo, and he had a focus. No, he didn't have a focus, actually. But it was a plasma torp. But then 33 just shot at him. I don't know if he'd be a 1. He'd probably be a 1 or 2. And then the feedback, yeah, would put him down to either dead or 1. It's interesting who you go for here, though. Because you could do something with, uh... Yeah, this is where... This is why I don't like feedback arrays so much. Because you start to get in a spot where... You start looking at... Uh, should I feedback? Should I not? Because there's some spots where it's a guarantee... You know, you have Soontir, like, at one hole. Like, okay, I'm just going to feedback him. But this is tough. Now, you could do something like a two-left turn 
with 222, and then barrel roll him left back, and then do like a hard one with 333, barrel him left back, and I... Oh, actually, I don't know if that would block that 4K from Guri or not. Ooh, it would be close. I think it might. But it would be very close. Oh, I don't know if it would, actually. But I was thinking maybe you could do that. Actually, God, this is how often do I play the Star Viper. I don't even know what is on its dial. I think it just had... Oh, it's just got the two, three Segnors. So you could definitely block both of those, I think. And then just feed back him to death. But then you're not going to be able to block Talonbane. It's interesting what Talonbane's got here. Do you just one forward? Because I don't think you want to one bank into the face of that rock. Payloss Hardest can go one or two forward. Yeah, and this is where Guri gets so hard to kill with Auto Thrusters, Sensor Jammer, and Ability. I think I probably would just try to feed back her with the last two. Hopefully, two triple two can survive, and you can get it down to a three on two game, make it a little more manageable. So one thing, I haven't talked about this tournament, I didn't play in it, but <clears throat> I've, and I've heard some mixed results, but the way it worked is you would submit two lists, and then your opponent would pick which one you were going to play at the start. So I don't know what the guy's other two lists were, but I'm wondering, and I don't think, I want, it'd be interesting to hear from the players what all they liked and didn't like about it. Maybe anyone who's watching... If you played in it, you can go ahead and let me know. Uh, but it, it seems like a cool format to me. But anyway, so triple two is just going to do a two forward jump over Guri there. And you know what? I was talking all about feedback array. Triple two doesn't even have a feedback array, so. He couldn't have even done that to Gary, even if he wanted to. Hmm. 
<coughs> Didn't expect that. The hard right turn from triple three. He's going to barrel roll right back. Interesting. I wonder if... Huh. Triple one's going to hard two. It looks like he's gonna roll right. And one thing to mention too is Paylob also has Gonk, so he's gonna be he's not gonna be easy to kill either. He's going to gonk for one. I think that's a good call. He's just going to run with Gurry. Didn't like where he was at. I was worried about getting blocked. Ooh, and a hard one from Talonbane. Is that clear? Oh, that is gonna hurt. That's probably gonna be a dead 222, because now he gets five dice. Gotta think he's just gonna target lock on 222. Yep. I think another reason maybe uh, Remy didn't want to signal or Gurry there is because then he would have stressed out Talon and Paylob through the Atani. It's awesome seeing this Atani work. Definitely hasn't seen a whole lot of play since its release. Mainly because I, I think this is where it's best in a three ship list like this. And it does well with the Hawk since the Hawk has no reds really. I mean, it does, but you're usually not going to do them. He's going to tee all the blanks, go for the kill. Oh, good night. Needs double evade here to survive. Yep. Yep, that will do it. Well. I said you should not give up, but now it's... Yeah, that's the thing with these jump masters. They got that terrifying alpha strike, but mid to late game, especially once you get the torps off, they're just not as scary. And now this is where the TLT can just start doing work on you. You're way out at long range. They're all out of position.
Well, <clears throat> yeah, this has been an unfortunate string of dice for Darth Bane. He handled the initial approach really well. You know, got pretty much what he wanted. A couple of long-range shots to start out. And then even the next turn, real nice too, but that last turn was really well done by Remy. And yeah, with the dice discrepancy, it's just going to be really hard for Darth Bane to come back here. Um... Well, oh, they're ready, so let's see what we got. Look at that. Well done by Darth Bane there. Gets them both turned around. Gets them both actions.
All right, Darth, let's see it. Show me what you got. Incredible talent is taking no damage through all this. That's the thing everyone always says about him. He dies too quickly, but... He got rolls like that. Live all game. <clears throat> All right. Let's see it, buddy. Yeah, it's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, yeah. Gets there. I think that just barely fits in. Okay, so he's selling out for Cobra, more or less. All right, well, good block. Big question is, can you punch any damage through, though? Oh, God. No recourse. Oh, 
Well, at least Paylob can't shoot him. He can't with the primary, but I can't imagine he would. I'm just thinking about it. I guess maybe. Meh, I'd still just go for the other guy. Always gonna. Hmm. Oh, that's it. Well, yeah, that'll probably do it. Wow. Well, I'll go one more, it looks like.
Ooh. Nice move. I guess Remy finally got wise to all of uh, Darth Bane's blocks. Payload's going to steal a focus. Gary gets a focus for his ability. And Talon Bane's going to get five attack dice. Four on two. Ugh. <laughs> One of eight hacks. Triple of eight. That's fitting. Uh, well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, it would have been interesting if uh, if Talon Bane gets nuked there at the start, like uh, Kalandros is saying, and he goes down to one or two, and then, yeah, dies the next turn. Would have been a really interesting game after that. But yeah, just pfft, not killing him. Yeah, there was just nothing Darth Bane really could have done at that point. <clears throat> okay, so that is it. So, Remy is into the finals, but uh, Darth Bane is still alive because now he goes to the loser's bracket, and even though he'd have to beat Remy twice in the finals, um, you know, he's due for some luck after this, so figure just gets really lucky the first game and they can win the next. So, I'm hoping to interview K-Dub next time. Maybe if we do the finals together, I can get him on. But, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Any of you guys want to uh, be on the next show? It's going to villainy podcast at gmail.com. Just hit us up. But thanks for tuning in, and I'll see y'all later.